Tin Fist. So this is the third installment in the training of a wife series. The first part talked about uh, specifics from a uh, individual from ancient Greek times talking about specifically to his wife what he expected of her. The second installment talked broadly about how men, women, sex, and marriage interacted during ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And I purposely didn't add any commentary to that because I wanted it to stand out as, as it was written and let the listeners come to their own conclusions. And this installment is to really to talk about, okay, why do we care? That's ancient Greece, ancient Rome. Why do we care? So when I got married, I married a non-Western woman from my ancestral place. And I simply had more global life experience than she did. And so members of my family, members of her family kind of hinted and said, you know what, you're going to have to kind of groom her, mold her. Polish her. Those are kind of the words they used. But essentially, they were saying, this is a person that hasn't seen as much of life as you have. And so some of the things, because of your experience, you might be expecting may not be what this person has capabilities of yet. Doesn't mean they can't learn them, but they may not be present or present in the extent that I would expect. These are people who knew me. And so I kind of took it with a grain of salt and I thought, uh, well, can't be that much of an issue. But there's a good thing, little tangent here. So people who are from societies where marriage has a higher value and so far that, you know, the families meet, they get to know each other, there might even be background research. This came from people who actually knew and spent more time with her than I did at the time, around the time I met her. So they were coming from a place of, you know, information, you know, actually hard one information. So anyway, the point is that when the beginning of married life started, I did start to notice some of these things they talked about. Again, they weren't deal breakers. They were just things that little coaching here and there and just practice eventually, sometimes over months, sometimes over years, came about along the path that it should have for uh, her. And so what does it have to do with the series? So one of the biggest problems, I think, in this era we have, uh, not only with marriage, but any kind of relationship, uh, particularly in the West, is the assumption that the two people going into it are fully trained, fully equipped, and fully experienced in all aspects of what they're getting into, right? Uh, I'm sure you people have heard, you know, similar correlations uh, or rather contrast to, you know, you go to be a teacher, you got to take a license, you got to be a doctor, you know, certifications, you know, lawyer, barks, all that stuff. Even to be a private eye, you got to go somewhere and get a license, right? Notary public, same deal. But with marriage, you pretty much just walk in there in the West. It doesn't take much. It's really easy to get in, but hard to get out. And that's by design, which is out of scope for this video. But the idea is one of the most important decisions one will make if one chooses to make it. And the ramifications uh, are lifelong <laughs> at best. And at worst, you end up being divorced, raped. But there's no kind of coaching, grooming None of that stuff, no training in the majority. I know there's certain uh, denominations or even areas in the West that they might require you to take a class. But by and large, you can just walk into the city hall, you know, take your blood test, get your certificate, pay your $15 or whatever, and get married. So you're on your own. However, we can see from the excerpts I read that was something too making sure that when you got married the person you were getting married to had an idea of what was expected from them now let's take it to the context of a job when you start a job again it's not as good as it used to be right but any good manager even if you have a four-year solid bachelor's degree from a prestigious or well-renowned university there's still going to be something called orientation right to orient you to 
the reality of where you are. Great you studied all that stuff, but we're actually going to show you what we expect of you and what your tasks will be on the job. And if anybody who's had a job, even like the most ridiculous job, you had some sense of what you were supposed to do. None of that with marriage. None. And I think even with, again, long-term relationships that don't, dating, whatever you want to call it, anything short of a bus ride with someone, there's no real orientation. And so that's most of the problem that trip people up that do not allow them to even attempt to go the distance or at least try, right? And so there's something to be said. You're married, whether you're thinking of getting married or whether you're just thinking of, you know, dating someone, whatever. At any type of, I would even go as far as say, if you're picking a roommate, right? Any kind of partnership that you expect to spend a significant amount of time in, there should be some sort of orientation. And it doesn't have to be unilateral. It can be bidirectional, okay? Typically, if the if one person has more experience, granted that person might be more of a mentor position. But that's not to say that the person with more experience isn't going to learn from uh, the junior experienced individual. I learned a lot about myself through Uh, my wife in a lot of ways, even though I had more life experience. So it goes both ways. And so it's just something to think about for those of you, again, whether you get married, whether you're dating, whether you're going for a job, whether you're having a business partnership, this idea of some sort of multi-directional training or orientation to help you adjust to what you're about to undertake. I think would do a lot of the relationships we enter in life uh, justice. It would definitely smooth the path, or at the very least, make it easier to deal with the bumps in the road. Okay, that's all I got for now. Until next time.